Hello and welcome to another Quality of Life Tools add-on demo, this time for Materials Panel Advanced. So what is it? Well, an add-on designed to ease your day-to-day -day use of materials in Blender. At its core, it's essentially just a clear list of all the materials available in your current session. It allows you to directly apply the materials to any number of objects in many, many ways. But that's just on the surface though as it has many utilities built into it that are hopefully smooth and intuitive. You shouldn't have to worry about certain things, and this add-on aims to make life just that little bit smoother for you. Among the things it can help you do, it can help you maintain your materials in the assets library, both backwards and forwards. It helps you declutter, allowing you to get rid of unwanted materials, either automatically or directly deleting them yourself. It allows you to switch between object and data modes on the fly. It helps you edit materials that are otherwise inaccessible. It helps you keep track and select objects by material basis and many, many more things. Where to find it? Well, there is the usual end panel version found here, but now we also have a pop-up version which can be hotkeyed and accessed anywhere. I'll get to the hotkey setup later on this video. So a quick tour of the interface. The interface is, broadly speaking, divided into three sections. At the top, we have the tools and utilities. Below that, the favourites, which is where you can store materials so they're easier to find later. I find good just for organising. And below that, we have the remaining materials. Before we dive into the utilities, I'll quickly go through the functionality of each of the material bars. To the left of them, you will see a small preview thumbnail of each of the materials. This acts as the core functionality of the add-on, for which I, I guess most of the work gets done. If you hover over it, you will see a tooltip showing all of the variable options that you can do with just that one button. We can use Alt, Shift and Control click for all of the different operations available. So the single click. That button is for simply applying a material to any number of objects. As you see here, just orange to all of those things there. Now, one thing to bear in mind is, very importantly, the Blitz button, this button up here, which di dictates whether it should be applied to the whole material, which overwrites everything on it, or individually preserving the materials that it's already on, including the active slot. And for example, if we have Blitz on, and just this, this has multiple materials on it, as we can see. Blitz on, dodger blue, the whole thing is blue now. However, let's just undo that. If we have blitz off, it return, retains the, uh, the layout as such. And dodger blue will only change the active material slot, which is dodger blue up here. If it were deep navy as the active slot, red. Um, so that's as much as the single click does. It just applies materials to the selection. Then we have the control combo, which is a special case because normally when you will select on an object, you will have a material already applied to it and able to edit it. However, some objects in Blender, like linked collections, have no directly accessible material because they're in the source, the linked collection. Um, but with Material Panel Advance, yes, you can. What you do is control click on the material you want to change, in this case the red in it, and there you can change to your heart's content. There we go, see? And then we have alt click, which selects any object that the material is applied to. For example here, if we alt click on light sea green, which is the same as clicking on this button here, on the side, as long as you have that button available. If you don't, you can just alt click on anything and it will select it. Again, you can do the same thing with just selecting the button on the right, if you have that visible. So anyway, Alt-click selects objects with that material applied. Note that it also selects objects with it applied as a sub-material. These have one material in each of them. This one has many materials. And what Alt-click has done is automatically switch the slot of the active slot to that material for you, all automatically. And then we have shift click. Shift click does the same as if you would have had this button activated, which sends things backwards and forwards from the favorites area. The favorites area again is 
just to help you keep things organized so that you can find things later on. So if you don't have that button available, I like to keep things minimal, you can shift click and it will send them to the favorites area or back again. And then we have the big combo of shift control click. And that is definitely one of my favorites because what that does is it applies a copy of a material and applies it to the object and also adds it to the favorites. Now, what that, that allows you to do is make small variations of materials. Uh, for example, this red ball, I want it to be something uh, similar to the green one here, which is, as we can see, dark olive green. Let's shift that into favorites. And this one, I want to be a copy of that one. So shift, control, and click. That makes a copy of it. That allows you, once again, to make tiny little variations of these things. There we go, little variations. And finally, what we have is another little utility to help you keep organized, and that's the Control-Alt-Click. Control-Alt-Delete, as Windows users will know that terminology, it actually deletes a material. So Control-Alt, any material, and it deletes it directly and automatically unassigns it to any object that had that material applied to it. Okay, so we've had a basic overview of how each of the bars work. Let's have a look at the toggles and the utility section at the top. First, you have new material. That one is pretty self-explanatory. Just select anything and create a new material for it. If you have many objects selected and you press it once, it will add it to all of the objects and all the ways you can think of. Here's a little tip for you though. If you control press it, it will add a different material, random, all named properly for each of them. And you can click it again and again as such. And below that, we have the Blitz button. Now, you should know what that one does already. After that, we have the Usage button, which shows you, obviously, when you select an object, um, which materials those objects are using. That is also apparent when you don't have that button toggled on, but now they're highlighted in red. That's not super apparent to everybody, so I included the facility of that indication button to the side as well. And selecting that button will also act like the Alt click in that it will select objects with that material applied to it. Then we have the Favorites button, which shows you a simple little star for, <laughs> that's a star, that's my favorite, acts as a button to allow you to send it forwards and backwards from and to the favorites section. After that, we have the fake user and Blender is actually really good at cleaning up after itself in that when you quit a session, any materials and objects that are not used tend to get cleared out. And that's what this button is for. You see it in many places on the interface and basically that little shield protects it from getting deleted from Blender when you quit, even if it's not being used apparently anywhere. And finally, we have the asset status. This now uses the Blender built-in assets library, which is fabulous, as we all know. Here's the asset browser. Let's go to the current file. And you can see here that we already have two in there, which are visible when you toggle that on. Now, it's not just an indicator. It's also a utility for sending things back and from the asset library, the asset browser as such in Blender. Um, these you can obviously use just as you would um, in, in any other case. One thing to bear in mind, however, with the built-in asset browser in Blender is it does not update the thumbnails for you. This has nothing to do with materials panel. It's just the way that Blender works. So for example, if the red here, as you notice here, the red, if you were to change the color of that to, um, I don't know, any, any other color, you can see it's updated here, here, it's even updated in materials panel, of course, but not in the asset browser. Blender, when it creates a thumbnail, creates it one time only. It doesn't automatically update that. You can, however, just click and click again, and it will update it via material panel. That's an extra little utility for you there. It's very, very handy if you like to work with the assets browser. And finally, onto this little box of treasures, the tool section. Firstly, we have filter, which allows you to, uh, let's go filter for green. 
Yes, there we go, plenty of greens. It's nice to be able to whittle down to exactly what you're looking for. Don't forget to turn it off. <laughs> And next up we have column width, which is to do with the interface, so you can have it as you like it. It's self-adaptive, so you can change uh, to your heart's content, however you prefer to have it. And this dictates how wide a column can be at its maximum before it splits into another. Um, so for example, if you want to keep it very, very compact, you can do so, but sometimes you have very long material names, and then in that case it's uh, obviously nicer to be able to have that room for the longer material names if you need it that way 200 for me Pop. back to there we go Pop. and next up we have clean up object slots now any object can have any amount of material slots applied to it in this case we have two usually one but two two there this one for example has a whole bunch of materials attached to it that aren't actually being used this is what cleanup object slots does. It just goes through automatically any, any objects you have and removes anything that's not actually being used. It, it keeps clutter down to a minimum. Nice little tool to have that one. And similarly, we have purged unused in scene, which helps to maintain and clear away clutter. So for example, you may have materials that are not actually being used by anything. So purged unused in scene, see, we've already got rid of a bunch. Um, for example, if we were to add a single material to all of these red say what was being used by them is still in the scene but it's just not being used blender's quite good at that and it will take care of many materials when you save and exit but sometimes it's just nice to do that on the fly so purge and use and it keeps things manageable now then let's talk about converting object and data linking um hopefully you're an advanced user and you're already aware of what that means but just in case Blender has a nasty habit of using the same terminology all over the place, but um, linking is otherwise known as assets in other programs. And I will do that with this and just make sure that these are linked, which means if you make any changes to one mesh, it will make the same changes to all of those attached meshes. They are instanced objects now. And by default, Blender makes all objects, sorry, all materials, uh, <laughs> See how confusing it can be. All materials as data linked. And what does that mean? That means that if you change the material on any instanced object, it makes the change to all of them. However, if you have them as object linked instead, and then you would have to create a new one and then go and find blah, 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 blah. That's a pain in the bum for many. What we can do with materials panel advanced is just convert it, convert to object linked. So now these objects can all individually, so just put them all as red or individually have whatever color they want, even though they are still instances. Do note that material panel advanced is agnostic. It doesn't care now whether you use data or object based material assignments. It works on all of them just as easily and you can do all of these functions and do the conversions on any number of objects at the same time. Next, we have the make a vault button. And what that does is it will create a blank object. That blank object, uh, let's go into view layer, blank object will be put in the materials vault. This is an object that has no faces or vertices or anything like that, just a bunch of materials attached to it. And that is the secret on how we can actually edit materials that are otherwise inaccessible. It's part of the, the control click method. So you will sometimes see the material vault or materials holder turn up in your outliner, but don't worry, you can delete those at will, that they don't harm anything. And in fact, with many, many of the uh, functions in materials panel, it gets rid of them anyway. But it's nice to know, make a vault, will temporarily create an object with every material in your scene so that you can edit them directly. Finally, we have the all to assets button, which is kind of hidden for a reason. Um, that one is for allowing you to work with asset browsers. And as I've already shown you before, we can work with things one material at a time just by clicking on those objects, uh, uh, sorry, materials, and sending them one at a time. That works 100% of the time, all the time, really well. 
However, if you're a lazy bugger like I am sometimes, and you have a whole bunch of materials and you don't want to do that, you can send them all to assets, all at the same time. However, do be warned, Blender can be a right bugger sometimes, and it doesn't always just go that swimmingly. Usually, all to assets. Ah, uh, see, I even bring up a warning for you. And normally, it will just populate the whole thing for you directly, nicely, and quickly. But sometimes, sometimes, Blender will hit a material and decide to take a bloody age to do it. It can take seconds, minutes, sometimes even long enough for you to go and make a meal. Do be warned, probably be best to uh, actually save your scene before clicking that button. It's reserved for advanced users that are aware of how that works. But don't get me wrong, it's a really, really, really nice utility to have. Finally, what do we have here? We have materials pop-up, which might seem silly because all it really does is pop up another version of the pop-up. That would be daft, wouldn't it? It's only really there so that you can right click on it and assign the shortcut you want to use for the material pop-up. So if you don't want the end panel, you can pop it up anywhere. It's just a nice way of being able to set your own shortcut keys. And you know what? I think we've actually covered everything. Um, yeah, that seems about it. I've certainly forgot something, I usually do. If you have any questions or any suggestions, as always, do feel free to get in touch with me. Um, I'm always open ears, and without your suggestions and help, we wouldn't have advancements in <laughs> things like this. I really appreciate you guys. I certainly hope you like what you've seen. Um, yeah, please, please buy it or um, just enjoy having it if you've already bought it with um, any of the other packages. Do bear in mind if you if you ever buy a, an add-on from me or if you <laughs> if you already own the material collection, you'll always get these for free. I never charge for updates. Anyway, thanks again for now and. Bye-bye.